Ah, shake it. Shake is that thing that when you see it, it will pay your body. You'll be like, ah. If only, if, if only that I'm not a Christian. episode of Reluminate. It's your girl, your host, MJ. And today we have someone so, so, so special. Look at these videos that I've seen that you really like. You like everything, how it's edited, how it flows. This is the man behind. Thank you. Please tell us your name. All right. So my name is Ezekiel. It's thank nice you to be. Much. It's nice to have you here. Yeah, so it's really you. nice. Like we captured him from the back to the front. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Good. And I came willingly. Yes. Thank you so much for coming here. Yeah. This is the month of September. Yeah. This is our ninth episode for the year. Mm -hmm. As you may know, if you've been following, if you miss any single episode, do you know what? Pause. Go back. Watch everything one to eight, then come back. Okay, yeah. please come back. <laughs> All right. So this month was really special because we did something that we do every single year, where we dive into a particular book of the Bible, studying verse by verse. And this year, this month, we went to the book of First Thessalonians, and it was such an amazing book. But don't yeah. worry, yes. I will not jump the gun. We'll go through it little by little, bit by bit. And as usual, we have very very beautiful names for our teachings yeah so the first teaching do. in this series was faith hope and I love yes. so why why faith hope and love yep uh why faith hope and love is because this was something that was very known about the Thessalonian church mm. paul commended them on their work of faith on mm -hmm. their labor of love mm -hmm. and their patience of hope and in mm. fact it was known because you read somewhere in verse 7 mm. that the Macedonian church, the church even in Corinthians, they got to know about this Thessalonian uh, church because mm -hmm. they were facing serious heavy persecution, but upon still, mm. they had this okay. faith. Mm -hmm. They had love and they had hope. Mm. And why did they have it? It's because they had a perfect example that they were following. Mm. Uh, Paul, who was their came from another town, he has been evangelizing and he was being persecuted, came and still preached the gospel to them powerfully. Mm -hmm. These people were idol worshippers, but they received the word of God mm -hmm. with joy. Yeah. They received it, they left the idol worshipping, came to God and served him faithfully. And despite them being persecuted, just like in the case of Paul, that was mm. being persecuted, they still persisted. They mm. still had that faith. Yeah. And you see, for me personally, what it has done for me, one thing I can remember is that patience of hope. Mm. Because prior to uh, joining the fire, I was not sure about salvation. You see, mm. I, yeah, I believed in Jesus, right? But going to heaven, I didn't have that confidence. So mm. if I heard about Jesus coming back, I was skeptical. Mm. But now that I have that hope that, see, Jesus is going to present me unto the Father. Mm. That's a hope that I can always look forward to. And even Paul reminded the Thessalonians about this because some people were being killed. And mm. Paul wanted to give them that hope. And you see that this hope, they really had it and it helped them even in their persecution. And yeah. even Pastor Kenneth encouraged that this is something that every church should have. Mm -hmm. When they roll out your, the list of good things about your church, not, it should not just be, oh, we gave out money, we did this. But no, you must also have that work of faith. Mm -hmm. Not just we are, we are Christians, but let it show. Mm. You must have level of love yeah, among each other. Mm -hmm. And then you must have that patience of hope. Looking forward to when Jesus comes back and is going to redeem us, and we are going to have the full package of salvation. So yeah. yes, that's it for the first teaching. There's Thank so you. much fashion. I'm like, I honestly don't even have much to add because, like, it just felt like I was learning all over again. Thank you so so much for that. And that was like on chapter one. So now for chapter two, we learned about doing life together, and that was in two teachings. But we're going to talk about the whole chapter as it goes. So what does it mean? to do life together. What does that look like? Doing life together means getting involved with each other. Mm. Not just, okay, the pastor is on the high rank, mm -hmm. the believers or maybe some group Members of... Members of the church well, are just dead. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> and everybody is segregated. No, no, no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is a coming together of everyone, mm. both the pastorate, both the leaders, and both workers, new members, everyone doing life together. That's and in right. fact, you see it in 
the second chapter of First Thessalonians, right? You see, first of all, how Paul preached the gospel boldly, and he was involved. We know that, okay, yes, Paul at a time because of the persecution, he went to other cities to preach the gospel. But even there, he was still like, ah, I wish I can come back to mm-hmm. see these Thessalonians. Mm-hmm. I wish this. Yeah. Ah, I love you so much. I was nurturing you. I, you see that he was involved. This is not just a pastor that, oh, I've seen you guys. I've, I've, you guys already know the word, right? Okay. Peace out. <laughs> select good leaders. And, and Bye, guys. The, <laughs> no, he was still involved. And mm-hmm. that is something that is very great. And in fact, it's something that I've seen in these five ministries. Too. Yes, right. Uh, pastor is involved. In fact, when I got to know that, you know, he was in another country and still holding service, and sometimes he will fly down here for li- life program. That was something that taught me. I mean, you see his passion for this thing called the gospel and the ministry. Mm-hmm. And then it encourages me personally because, mm-hmm. okay, yes, like MJ said, I'm the one that edits the video. And it gives me that, that yes, there are people that have been blessed by this. That's so right. despite whatever I'm experiencing, sometimes it's really not that easy. But I should know that, yeah, people have been blessed by it and give my best to it. Just That's like true. Paul did, just like Pastor Kenneth is doing, so can I also do it. That's, right. That's one. Then the second part of doing life together is as members. Mm. You see in verse 17 of... Uh, chapter 2. Yes, of chapter 2 of First Thessalonians. Paul was like... These Thessalonian believers are in his heart. He prays for them. Mm-hmm. And then Pastor Kenneth encouraged us that we as members, we should try to check up on each other. Mm-hmm. We should pray for each other. When we mm-hmm. hear, oh, this person is going through this, remember them in your prayers. Pray mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. Then check up on how are you doing since mm-hmm. this. Have, have you received any testimony? Has this come in? Mm-hmm. Let, let it be something that is known in every church. And in fact, that's something that is important. That's why, you see, okay, the letter of the... Uh, Paul's letter to Thessalonians was to Thessalonians, but it's all we can draw impactful insights from it. And so, yes, we need to do life together, both leaders, both members, everyone coming together to do life together. So that's what doing life together means. No, yeah, and thank you. Thank you so, so much for that. Because I, I honestly like the fact that you talked about even like between members because it's one thing to say, oh, this is my community. This is where I'm, these are the people I'm doing life with. But and then always expect them to check in on you. You can also, I learned from this that you should also learn to reach out and say, see, I'm not feeling this type of way. Please help me. I need help. Because that's what yeah. the body of Christ is about. Like, yeah. we're all a joint. Like, if the finger is hurting, but the finger is not, okay, let's say your finger is numb now. Mm-hmm. And then you hit it on something. You won't feel any pain. It's most likely until you look at it and be like, oh. So that's, it's that exact analogy that if you don't reach out and say, I'm going through this, we might, your brothers, your sisters might not know. So please learn to reach out. Yes, and from yes. that, we're going into the final teaching in the month of September, yes. which was Triumph, Triumph over, over Shaggy. Hey. If you're living <laughs> in Nigeria, it's such a timely teaching because yeah. oof, the ah. Shege, as we Shege in like Gen Z will say, but... Jesus is our banner. <laughs> but then another thing to see that this Shege did not just start from today. So don't think like, oh, Shege is just peculiar to you. Thessalonians, <laughs> the people in Thessalonica, like a minister I know says, they went through it too. Yeah. So how do we triumph over Shege? Like, is there a way? Uh, is it yes. possible? Yeah, it's possible. Uh-huh. If it's not possible, we will not be alive today. <laughs> true, but true. First off, let me even start with for those that might not understand what shege is. You see, ah, shege. Shege is that thing that when you see it, it will pay your body, you'll be like, ah. If only, if only that I'm not a Christian, but because you have been built up. Sometimes go on, you're a Christian, but you want to still do but the spirit controls you. Amen. Shege sometimes could be that hard thing that you're going through, that mm-hmm. tough situation that wants mm-hmm. you to give in, that wants you to to push you away from God. Mm. But you remember that there is a God. Mm. And the Thessalonians, they went through, or the Thessalonian church rather, mm-hmm. they saw Shege. These people were being persecuted because they believed in Jesus. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, Jesus is a new king. They were afraid that, oh, they will send them to prisons and all that. Some were even killed. Mm-hmm. But yet, they were able to triumph. Even Timothy was sent to encourage them. Mm-hmm. And our pastor Kenneth also encouraged us because he knew that some of us, or many of us, are experiencing Shege. And he showed us some tips. Mm. But it's not limited to that. 
of how we can overcome Shege. Mm. And I'm going to start with one that uh, MJ was already emphasizing from the last teaching. Mm. Reaching out for help. Mm. Ask for help. Because I tell you, personally for me, I don't used to ask for help before. Mm. I like to try and solve things by myself, mm -hmm. rationalize it. I did that go. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Before you even find an answer to one, another one is coming. This Nigeria, or oh, in fact, this life is full of it. It's full of it. Yes. But then, when you ask for help, you see, you are, you don't know everything. There are people that are out there that will have the answer, or can help you lighten that burden that you are carrying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You must be willing to ask for help from your members, from the people that are around you, mm -hmm. and then you must be willing to ask God for help, which is related to another point: pray. But one other important point that I would like to focus on is joining a community. Mm. Joining a community. Because I remember this one very well. Mm -hmm. You see, there was a time in my life last year, my birth month, which is in May, I was just facing Shege upon Shege. I applied for university. Everything was working fine. The other thing inside, they did not accept me. It was, wow. it, was, it was painful. Before I can do, process that one and talk to someone about it, the person said, okay, uh, I'm busy this weekend, so next weekend... Another one is happening. I reached out to another minister in another ministry. Before that one can help me because it's busy with other things, another one has happened. But you see, when you, I joined a community, that's the Vivify community, and where I was sent into the Life Grow group. Oh, uh, Shout see? out to yeah. Grow Groups. <laughs> All right. So when I was there, you see, they have this thing called Grow Group Meetings. Mm. And when you join, you hear people talking about their day. First mm. off, you know you're not, I'm not the only one. I know that I'm not the only one going to do so. And then you hear how they got a word, or they prayed about it, mm. or they shared with another friend, and they were encouraged. And then this encourages you also, or they might even share a word, and it encourages me that, oh, okay, the word of God says this. Mm. I can learn from it. I can confess it. Mm -hmm. I remember, especially our group leaders, they emphasize these things. Mm -hmm. And so much, so much, I see myself doing it. Before I can, anyone else can help me. I'm learning from this group group. Mm -hmm. And together, we are bonding. I've also had opportunities to encourage others, to help others, to even pray for others. Mm -hmm. And this, and you know, when I ask them, that, oh, how are you doing? They are much better. Mm -hmm. So yes, joining a community is another way of triumphing over Shege. Mm -hmm. So there are other points, but you want to <laughs> go to the teaching, listen to what Pastor Kenneth That's you will right. be blessed by it. Yeah, and you know, we explored First Thessalonians from chapter 1 to 3 for the month of September. There are more important points there mm -hmm. too. Go back, listen to the whole full teaching and mm -hmm. you will be blessed for it. So, yeah, yeah I totally thank you agree. Very much. Because I mean, where else will you find a verse by verse exposition yeah. of, a Bible, of a Bible passage? of a whole book so please don't miss it like the dutch has said go there and you can find the links down there in yeah. the description box click on it and if you have questions you have concerns so you listen to this you're like okay i want to be a part of a community but i don't know how to please reach out to us we're on instagram on twitter we're on tiktok yeah. find us there send us a message we will definitely respond to you and if you feel like oh i don't know who's your message their social media handler send us an email best believe that it's going to be someone that you can trust you can trust our social media handlers best yeah. believe but if you're like ah is the pastor that will check the email true you can send a mail you'll get answers and also if you want to take a step further maybe you have prayer points you have prayer requests please click on our website link and find the prayer forum where you can drop your prayer points and best believe that we'll be praying for you and with you yes. so till the next episode keep bearing fruit, fruit.